Too many people think that this method of marketing is completely dead. The truth is it's not and it can be successful for generating motivated seller leads. All you gotta do is stick with me in this video and we'll show you exactly how to do it. So with that, I'm Christian Weatherspoon. This is Real Estate Investing Made Easy and it's time to make it easy. The next one is direct mail. Now, direct mail, for those of you who have been in the business for a while, direct mail is tried and true. It's been around for a long, long time. It's probably not going anywhere anytime soon because, you know, as much as, you know, the methods of technology for phones, the methods of technology for where people are watching TV shows, how people are listening to radio stations, all these different things may change. But at the end of the day, ever since the foundation of societies, like <laughs> mail has always been there, right? And so mail is something that is going to stick around. And, you know, obviously there's different ways to do it. You know, and, and Christian, you have more experience in direct mail than myself. So you could probably speak to it more. But I do know coming from an advertising background, generally speaking, anywhere from a one to three percent response rate and this is across all different types of businesses is generally what you can expect i would not expect anything higher than three percent three percent would be phenomenal yeah one percent is probably what you should bank on if you're doing it right and doing it right typically requires multiple drops it's very rare that you're gonna have when i say drops right what do we mean we mean to one person, like if I'm doing a direct mail piece to Christian, one mail piece today would be one drop. And then a week from now, that would be the second drop. And a week from then it would be the third drop, right? So if you're doing one drop, you're probably not gonna even get close to a 1% response mm -hmm. rate. The general approach is typically gonna be four to five drops. Now, the challenge with that is that's where it increases the cost because you could be paying anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar depending on the type of direct mail piece that you're using, right? I mean, you've got postcards. Why don't you show them some of the different things that you could do? Yeah, postcards, one, it could be something like this. You know, a little bit of a, a green postcard there. You know, it just sells your vacant home now. Obviously, this is targeted, which speaks to how you can get a higher response rate. You've got to be targeted in your marketing if you expect that. By the way, if if I got a three percent, a a three percent, and I was sixty years old or seventy years old, eighty years old, I'd be doing backflips. Oh. Oh. I don't know how I would do it because I can't do one, but I'd be doing backflips if I got that. And then, you know, it all depends on what you do. This one right here, it's got little, you know, color on it. It's very patriotic, but on the back, they told me to F off. They return this in another envelope. So you're going to get a lot of returns, a lot of return to senders, which is this yellow piece right here. And that's one of the reasons it can get really expensive. But a couple things to note that are good tips and some pro tips. MelissaData.com is a good resource to check whether or not that address is either A, valid, B, occupied, or C, if the owner of the property lives there. You can do that for free to a certain extent. You could also have a subscription. And what's more important than that is something that really fits in the center of this conversation, where you get your lists. Yeah. Where do you get your lists to make sure that you don't have stacks of these? And I've done it right and I've done it wrong. And I've had really big stacks return to me bad stacks, bad stacks. because I didn't scrub the list properly. Yep. Of course, I tried to scrub it, but what are a couple things that you use that we use together in our own business that are super beneficial as far as pulling the list? Well, so, I mean, there's a number of different sources. I mean, you can use Property Radar, you can use PropStream, you can use Privy. Just depends on what you're looking for. But at the end of the day, right, like it is all about getting the right data. If I'm sending out direct mail and I'm using a list that I pulled two years ago, well, chances are there's going to be a lot of people on that list that have already moved, right? So it's really important that when you are doing direct mail pieces, you're working with fresh data, clean data, you're scrubbing out, you know, bad data and just taking the time. But as far as like the different forms of direct mail, I mean, you've got 
handwritten letters, you've got postcards, you've got, you know, different flyers, you've got trifold flyers, you've yellow got, letters. you know, yellow letters. And then you also have like the old school hardcore method where you literally get your friends and family to help you hand write actual letters and fold them up and put them into envelopes and lick and stick. And uh, what does that say right there? Hi, my name is Nathan. Who's Nathan? Nathan is my brother. Getting your friends and family. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so I, I would not actually recommend, unless you are on a shoestring budget, which would be in our previous video about how to do lower cost, don't write it yourself unless you want to get a cramp in your hand. I've found it's not really worth it, but what is worth it is writing this letter, and this is a photocopy. Yep. So then you can put hi, and then put a space for the name, and then a, then a comma and then print that out so then the only thing you're actually handwriting is the person's name. Exactly. That would be a little hack. Yep. Yeah. And it 100%. works. It works. And they can tell, right? But psychologically, it's like, oh, you personally wrote this. Yep. I did personally write it. Yeah. To exactly. you and 3,000 other people. At initial glance, you know, they're going to think it's handwritten to them. And, you know, and then all we're trying to do is get their eyes on it. Yep. Right. We just want we want to avoid that person that goes to the mailbox, flips through their mail and we all do the same thing. I do it. Right. What do you do? You pull out all the mail out of the mailbox and you go trash, trash, bill, bills, 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 trash, trash, bill, trash, trash, bill. Oh, looks like it might be a check. And that's another yeah. good piece of direct mail that you can actually use at a really high level is there's some where it actually looks like a check. It's got the perforated edges that you would tear and unfold and it's got their offer right there on it. So that can be a really great form of direct mail yeah. because it's a pattern interrupt, right? At any time you're doing any type of advertising, you want to think of a pattern interrupt. And so, knowing that everybody goes to the mailbox and they go trash trash bill bills 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 trash trash bill where do you think they're putting something that looks like a check definitely in their, not in the trash in their open box yes or they're keeping it with the bills and then sorting through the bills and open them. Maybe this one's going to pay off these other bills, Yeah. Right. right? So yeah, think of a way you can interrupt patterns with those direct mail pieces. I know dentists, for example, it takes on average four postcards for them to get a client. Dentists are actually have one of the highest returns for direct mail pieces in any industry. Dentists and surprisingly uh, plastic surgery. Wow. So. It doesn't matter the location with plastic surgery. I mean, I haven't done national direct. I would just imagine somewhere like Orange County and like Beverly Probably. Hills would have a higher response rate than like possibly, yeah. You know, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah. Who knows? I'm not a plastic surgeon. There's one other thing too, direct mail. That's, and you should see on the screen right now the shot of some of these sample letters. So, you know, you got the handwritten letter that is actually written by a machine and it looks like a ballpoint pen. It's super attractive and all that's good. But what's really important is get them to open it. Just like Chris was saying. So what do you do to get them to open it? Well, there are companies that will fulfill direct mail for you and make something really special, put a sticker on it or something like that. But what we did is I actually had when my niece was really young, I had her just doodle on all of the envelopes. We're nice. talking about a thousand envelopes. Nice. And she loved art. She's like 18 now. She probably doesn't really like art as much. <laughs> but I had her do that and she had fun and it got a higher response rate than any other campaign I ever had. Nice. So you probably just saw that on the screen right now or it's still on the screen little doodles, flowers, and stuff like that. So, yeah, absolutely. Little tips and tricks. Yeah, and I think really the thing with that is it, it's more personalized. There's something to be said about a small local, you know, mom and pop shop. And that's kind of the feel that that creates. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that only like to buy local, sell local, and do things with local people. Oh, that's strange. It's not local. As opposed to if you're a real estate investor that has a national brand, hey, like more power to you. That's awesome, right? But if you're marketing as like, hey, we're ABC Hedge Fund, right? <laughs> like 
the little mom and pop who are you know facing foreclosure who are in a really tough financial position you know and here you are marketing yourself as this big hedge fund right like to some people you are the one percent right like and that's like there's a disconnect there right like they can't necessarily relate with you right right? whereas that letter that comes with you know a little doodle you know they probably have a child or a grandchild themselves you know and Mm -hmm. it it's relatable for them, right? And so now you're more human as opposed to this big robotic corporation. And I say all that to say, depending on what type of list you're marketing to, you might wanna have a different approach with your direct mail campaigns. Yeah, curiosity is the name of the game to get them to actually open it. And then it's like, you better bring it with the content. But a perforated check, is like number one exactly i get i open them all the time oh i every single time where if it remotely looks like it could be a check why because most of the time i know that it's probably going to be a piece of advertising however there's been times where i've gotten class action settlement checks from different class action suits that i didn't even know i was a part of a class of people that was in a lawsuit against the company you got your one dollar and 26 cents we got a dollar we got a but I have gotten a couple hundred dollars on those yeah. before, so I will always open something that looks like a check, and my guess is most of your clients will also open it if it looks like a check. In this video, you can watch another revenue generating form of marketing to your business. So click right here where you can guarantee that we're gonna make it easy.